so the last time we saw this thing on the dyno, we knew that it would only go to about 8,100 RPM, and we thought we were hitting the rev limiter, but it At actually first. wasn't the rev limiter. It was valve float. Yeah. Now, we, we suspected that on the dyno. We mm -hmm. took it apart, we took the cylinder heads and everything, and we put it over on the Spintron. Right. And sure enough, that's what we saw. We yeah. were we were floating Lowered the arches valves. at eighty one hundred. Yeah. So now, what we thought was, I'll bet you the the rocker system isn't stiff enough. And right. so we went to Comp Cams and yep. we got one of their new BSR shaft mount rocker systems. Yep. Now, let's talk about pros and cons. What I like about the system is that it fits right on the cylinder head. No modifications. It all fits like stock, you know, LS yeah. type locations. Um, I love that it joins all the rockers together. It adds a bunch of rigidity and stiffness in the system. Now, if you're not that concerned about push rod length, let's say you got a hydraulic lifter, yeah. slam dunk. Yeah. We, of course, had a solid lifter. Right. And so that meant we also needed a push rod change because with a stock rocker arm, there's no way to adjust the valve lash. Right. So we went back to comp and we got a set of their uh, XDA. XDA three piece push rods, yep. which are phenomenal. Really, really cool to be able to tune the lash really uh, painfully uh, at first. <laughs> that is the downside. Uh, that is the downside. You have to you have to take the whole rocker system off if one of your lashes are wrong. But now once we got it set, it was set it and forget it. We never had to deal with it again. That was awesome. Yeah. Now what we suspected was the old system wasn't stiff enough. So right. we set about as we did in the other videos the yep. total system stiffness testing. Right. You can check the difference in in total valve lift yep. between the checking springs and the real springs to see how much deflection there is. That's right. So I kind of expected that it was going to be a landslide, but in reality what we found is there wasn't actually that much difference in the actual total stiffness of the system. Right. Now, when we talk about the vertically statically essentially. Th that's right statically and just the vertical lift the, the amount of loss wasn't that much different right. statically um, however the things that do make a difference are not just the total amount of stiffness mm -hmm. but the ratio of stiffness to mass right so first of all we're getting the same amount of stiffness basically out of this system with a way smaller rocker arm mm -hmm. lighter less yeah, mass, less mass. Yeah. Um, we were able to use that stiffer three-piece push rod from comp Right, but before when we actually went stiffer on the Spintron, it made it worse. Yeah, well, because we had to go bigger to be stiffer, right? right. So with the three-piece XDA push rod, we have the larger base, but we're back to a normal sized push rod that will clear the cylinder heads and all yeah. that. So it was a great solution. What really I think is going to be the most improvement here, though, Lake, is the idea of moment of inertia or MOI. Got it. So to kind of explain that, um, it's a uh, it's weight and in, in, in distance, right? Yeah. So weight times arm equals moment. So I got this three D Archimedes printed... and his lever you're talking about here. There, there you go. Yeah. So so here's a three D mock up print of mm -hmm. a really big long rocker arm. Yep. And so the pivot length of the rocker arm from here to here. Basically, it's got to be the same because it's the same distance. Same from, lever ratio. That's right. So, the, but that one's lighter, less mass. Way less mass. So if I put a bunch of weight out here and you get this thing swinging, it's going to have a lot of momentum because of the moment of inertia. Right. And so I really feel like even though the total stiffness is the same, yeah. the higher stiffness to mass ratio of this system and the really lower moment of inertia, I think it's going to do good things for us. Well, there's just you look at it you can see there's less mass out oh, here yeah. on the end. Oh yeah, the absolutely. Yeah. By far. So, all right, so we've, this is what we've done to try to solve the valve float at 8,100 RPM. So we, we literally could not take the engine above 8,100 before because it was on the limiter, which wasn't the rev limiter. It was just holding the valves open. So hopefully right. we run this thing again, it'll go above 8,100. Let's go fire it up and let's see what we, what we find. Let's see what, what the let's RPM limit is now. Yeah, let's go. see what we got here we'll replay here and see what we got obviously we took it way past peak power but that's okay what we we're really trying to do is see how stable we can make it we can see the peak power was up here you know 75 7800 just like it was before but you can see here on that run we actually went to oh about 9250 or so and it was smooth as silk, like no problem. So the work that we got going on there in the valve train looks like uh, I would I would say paid off. Ninety two fifty from eighty one hundred. That's what about uh, 
1100 RPM or so of gain from going to that new rocker system, I'll take that. So now what we gotta do is go back and next year figure out how we make this move up and get some more airflow. But you know, now that we can do the RPMs, no problem, we'll figure that part out. What a day, what a day, what a day. But yeah, my brain, my brain is swollen. I've learned so much today. They told us, don't start cars. We are not gonna listen.